a sign of wildlife. Perhaps a little of the distance, it's kind of small. Do you guys see it? It's a little baby stop sign. Yeah. They're just so cute. That's what I said. There's a deer in front oh, of the tree. Oh, there's a deer! Look at the deer! This deer likes to play chicken. Oh, look at the
the Charlene all the way up to that mushroom shaped rock. You'll see our first rock formation known as Pulpus Rock. Now there's a little bit of a story that goes along with it. Back in the early 1800s, there was a traveling preacher who stood on top of the rock to preach his service on Native Americans traveling their canoes on the river. One Sunday during his sermon, he noticed that the Native Americans had fallen asleep. So he went to town to find something to spice up his sermons. And all he could find was a baby grand piano. So he brought that baby grand piano and set it on top of the rock. The next Sunday during his sermon, he noticed that the Native Americans had fallen asleep yet again. This made the preacher so angry, he started jumping up and down on that rock, splitting it right in half. It sent that piano player flying all the way across the river to that tree over there. The green one. And the green one. the baby green Ooh, piano right that. on the edge of the rock where it still lies today. I want to go there. With its legs propped against the rock and the keys facing the heavens.
It is only found in four different places in the world. Potsdam, Germany, where it gets its name. Zurich, Switzerland. Upstate New York, where it is currently underwater. And this 10-mile stretch of the Wisconsin River. Now, Potsdam sandstone is so brittle that if I were to give each and every one of you a piece of it, you'd be able to crumble it in the palm of your hands. It is also very porous, meaning it can lack in moisture, which is why the trees can grow from the top sand sides of it with little to the top soil. basketball and he froze like like the matrix he's shooting the basketball and he froze oh just kidding he made it it was not all that <laughs> not a safe drastic change in scenery that is due to one of the worst natural disasters to ever hit the area i'm talking about the breach of lake delton back on june 9th of 2008 lake delta received record amounts of rainfall causing the lake on the other side of the hill to raise up 50 one and a half inches now all that water had to go somewhere so it broke through the hill right there to get within four vacation homes and empty into the Wisconsin River. Now this all happened in just about two and a half hours. And if we look off to the left, how the same piece of trees is exactly how high the river got that day.
taken my tour about 150 years ago. Out to the right would be a city called Newport. A long time ago, from the Lock of the Cross Road, a plan of building a bridge between these two cliffs here. And when people found out, they started buying up the land with the intention of selling it back for a massive profit. When the Milwaukee La Crosse Railroad came back, they realized they could no longer afford the property, so they packed up operations and built the bridge two miles upstream, yeah. where they found the city of Kilburn. After that happened, the city of Newport became a ghost town, but this was actually a blessing in disguise because a few years later, a wildfire swept through the area, taking with it everything in its path except for one home, Don Manor.
Fox was the WGNU oh, okay. Dam. The dam. This was built back in 1927 to hold back the rushing waters of Dell Creek. After the breach of Lake Delton happened, they added an 80-foot spillway that cost $1.5 million to ensure that that would never happen again. Now I think this is the perfect opportunity for you to take all the damn pictures you'd like. Woo! Captain Abraham Vanderpool. No, 
Tom Vanderpool is quite the local celebrity as he was a co-signer of the Wisconsin State Constitution, a Civil War hero, and close friends with our 16th President, Abraham Lincoln. And as they would remember that Lincoln spent a few nights in the home. After Vanderpool passed away, the house went through a series of owners until 1943 when it landed in the hands of Miss Helen Robb. Now Helen Robb is a world traveler and through her 15 world travels she brought back many different paintings and artifacts that still decorate the home today, valuing it at over $1 million. Now I would love to take you all in there and show you around, but I cannot do that for two reasons. One, it is still privately owned by someone in the Robb family, and two, as good of a duck driver as Helen to think I am, I just don't think I can fit this big green machine through those front doors. But I will do all the next best thing and I'll show you some pictures of it later on in the tour.
for today. Now, just on the other side of this hill, there is a 50-foot drop-off. So, if you're anything like me and you're scared of heights, just do what I do. Close your eyes. Now, I can never remember. Is it a left or a right? Left, right, left. Now, here at the original Wisconsin Ducks, we are all about your safety, which is why Jess Taylor and Ailey installed this steel mesh barricade. Now, you might be thinking, that's just chicken wire. But Hank of the Hardware Store assured me that if I can hold back a chicken, I can most certainly hold back a duck. <laughs> now, to our left is Lake of the Dells. Lake of the Dells was founded for one sole purpose. To breed the Wisconsin State Summer Bird, the mosquito. But at the end of the season, when all the mosquitoes are old, we pack them up into this box here and we ship them off to our friends in Minnesota. Just like we did with Brett Favre. Turkey Hollow, or as those stock drivers like to call it, Lover's Lane. 
So if you're sitting next to that special someone, or even just a stranger, make sure to scoot in close and give them a nice, big, juicy, smacking $20 bill. Yep.
the duck says that you please say seated until I get to the back of the duck. And thank you again.